welcome to the Jamaica Youth Press channel to my loyal viewers and subscribers and those who haven't subscribed to the channel as yet um, this is going to be part three you know tell, um, explaining to you the audience all the facets or you know the dance or the operate in these communities and people you know they the work to visit them and the people who are from the ghetto university of the university of the west indies who you know perpetuate this misnomer that um that these dance are honorable people dance are people who have rise to prominence through brutality killing people between the community raping the little girls and all kind of all kind of things so we're going to continue the journey as we have stated already in part two the reason why Carl Bittian did not want to kill Owen Rifle Clark and how he became the person at the end of the stick by people from within his own gang who killed him, cried, mourned and buried him and pretend as if it was this man, Owen Rifle Clark, had paid people to kill, kill this man. To kill Bitty. And to this date, they cannot point a finger who is the person that pulled the, tr that pulled the trigger to kill Bitty at his home when they shoot him from behind. In which it was the same men from Ron Gully. Errol Mosse Johnson's son, Lionel Johnson. And the same Penko, the snake, they are the ones who are behind the killing of Bitty and pretend. Because today, you know, they cannot tell anyone. You know, so, who killed, who killed Bitty? Where the name, where the band them come from? Um, um, um. So, we continue the journey. So, I want you to listen to what, you know, happened with these brutal men who claim that they are dance and looking out for people in communities which is nothing but garbage and lies. What most people do not understand is that dance are self-appointed by virtue of their barbaric acts of killing others. And the body counts are important. Most young leaders dance are super dances. And I can tell you this from personal experience and being, and being the dance of community massage their egos as if they have some power to become a Dan. There is never a democratic process to elect a Dan. So their rule of the community may, may not have the support of the entire community, but there can't be any dissenting voice. Not, not that voice will become voiceless. So, you know, in, in this community, although, you know, um, these people appoint themselves as Dan's, there's no dissenting voice, so no one can say, but I disagree with the Dan, you know, this, that, that, that don't happen. You cannot disagree with the Dan, because if you disagree with the Dan as a community member, you might go, your voice might be, you know, voiceless. You know, meaning, the, the meaning, you're killing the persons who open their mouth against these parasites. Thereby, it would lead to the community becoming segmented into small gang zones, each led by its self-appointed Duns. Because most of these Duns are Duns, you know. The only educated Dan Jamaica I've ever seen um, was um, Vivian Blake, you know, that from Tivoli that died, and Christopher Dudu Squawk. Christopher Dudu Squawk went to a good school, one of the best schools in Kingston. And he was smart, so he's not an ordinary person. And if you had listened to a video that I have done about him, and listen when he was talking to two dunce thugs that who, who claim that they are dunce, you will you would hear the intelligence in his conversation with them, telling them because what they are looking at are small things, and to you know harass the people within the, the poor people, but he's thinking above them to tell them that look, when you are involved in crime, you don't pressure the poor people, cause you need the poor people as your constituents, so they don't turn on you. You want them to feel you want them to feel like you are looking out for them, so you don't tax them. Whilst these two idiots, so you know, you can go and check out the video. For example, during the 1990s, there were two gangs on Maple, Maple Leaf Road in Cockburn Pen. 
One name Walker Knight with a young teenager, Malo, a uh, German. Um, he was killed by, you know, Hunsby police. You yeah, understand? By, um, you know, um, Blackwood. And then Tuba or Montique, who was at the upper part of Bimpeview Road, closer to my wood drive. Tuba was the land of the community. The community of Capburn Pen used to fall on a one community in informal, informally title pen. It is now divided into fiefdoms or arena such as Maple, Maple View, Gully, White Wing, Salitier, you know, and all at war with each other. Then, in the early 2000s, my community of Waterford, St. Catherine, is another example of a, of a community split into different zones. When Adija Palmer, a.k.a. Vibes Cartel Gang, reign of terror, they created a gang zone with no previous identity to criminality. Waterford was the uptown for middle class people who had attended a certain amount, attained a certain amount of education and thus were able to get a good job and move away from Kingston metropolitan area. It was like winning the lottery because your home has a bathroom inside of the same. That was the first experience for most Jamaicans then by virtue of saying this was no legitimate geographical division in Waterford that would separate Gaza from any other community in Waterford. They just choose a few communities and name them Gaza. And the resident went along with these thugs. They had this as the core of the divisions that led to the death of Clive Lizard Williams. He was never from the Dan's community, but instead one of the communities that became Gaza. The residents living in this community can't interact freely or safely with others, other communities. So their experience and world becomes small and limited as they are unofficial new laws and rules that the dance enacted on the members of the various communities nearby. Who is allowed to come into the communities and who can enter the other community until one of them decide one day to kill or maim someone from the opposing community within the community. Most of these so-called scholars and bossy slaves do not look deeper into the lives of these people and the obstacle placed at their feet by these mongrels, parasites, carabunkers, and human waste. In Gully of Capburn Pen, parasite Errol Muscle, a mongrel, Johnson has become the Dan for his, for, for his board houses and pit toilet section, which is, which, is, which is found power as Dan, as he succeeded the late Carl Bitty Hines. Maybe a few hundred persons of various ages falling under his governance. And he feel good about his role of Gully and Sivrite Gardens, Kingston level, and all the illegal guns at his disposal. Not a single resident voted or elected the parasite Duns, Errol Muscle, Johnson, Liney, Police Chris and Penko. So what are the process and their qualification? Brutality. Brutality, brutality. Their position is achieved because they are brutal and they get this recognition because they brutalize any opposition by killing them, by pumping bullets into their bodies if they disagree with them. And they would be they would plan to kill even police officers whom they see as very effective and they can't corrupt. These men, the dance, okay, they pay some school fees, buy some books puts on treats, you know, you call it charitrix, uh, you know, sir pieces, charitrix, and, and settle dispute with the residents, thus making sure that no informal policy is one of their main tenants of the citizens. And those who violate the same have to move out of the community if they are given the chance to do so, appear dearly for breaking the community code of conduct set by them. Most people might be asking themselves, where do they get their finances from for their benevolence? Yes, because people are wondering, uh, most people don't think, you know, so where these men get their monies from to be so kind to these people? They have no legitimate business or anything like that. Remember that none of these men have any illegitimate business, jobs or career, apart from being career criminals, 
always committing crimes to fund their lifestyles and that of their residents by taking over people's lives. They have no job, business or inheritance. So where do their, their resources come from? <laughs> well, the money that they, that they have come at the expense of others. Some criminal acts like extortion, selling drugs, that's what they're doing in foreign. Narcotics, driving trucks with drugs, even kidnapping are used at tire business in New York as a front to wash dirty money and make it clean. The source may differ, but the cost of tears is the same because people who buy their drugs become addicted and depending on the drugs they peddle to function. Their monies are stained with someone else's misery and despair. I want you to remember that earlier I spoke of Carl Bitty Hines Reign of Terror, which featured controlled crimes in Gully, York Avenue, Seafright Garden, Scottburn Pen, Kinson Level. Well, yes, okay, well, Bitty fuel crime elsewhere. And it's just a matter of where the damn effect is felt. When Bitty was alive, he was not pooping or defecate on his doorstep. But trust me, his actions are being felt elsewhere in Jamaica as criminality is a network. The circumstances and phenomenon, phenomenon though not idiosyncratic to Jamaica, have unique traits, characteristics, and peculiarity that make our Dan culture divergent. Here is one such uniqueness of our Dan culture. It is its history. Ours was created by our political parties for political control, thus to gain votes and become the leading political party in parliament to become the government. Jamaica is not the only country that uses thuggery, badmanship and terroristic acts against its citizens as political pawn, tools and instruments. Jamaica and its politicians are the only ones that march with their coffins and endorse them as good citizens and activists. So if you, with that, if you go to the Boroboy video that's, um, that is there on the channel that said um, the most loved and feared Prime Minister of Jamaica and you will see Edward Siaga and Michael Manley, both of them. And you will see that, that part that I'm talking about with the coffin. You understand? You will see that. When the people who have experienced and felt their heart knew that they were terrorists and criminals who want others to yield to their will of criminality by seeing and blind, hear and deaf, or else they lose their life. I am telling you this. This is true, trust me. A majority of Jamaican criminals, except for Christopher Dudu Squawk, usually lack intelligence, communication skills, and marketing their trade as criminals, seems uniquely dunce and having a low IQ. They can't rationalize and realize that criminality is wrong, but they get some form of gratitude from members of the communities and those within its ranks. Both political party, COP, designation and naming the lack of denial, or even discussion with political leaders about gangs and have this defined connections to parties make us unique. One thing that every gang in Jamaica have in common, that they are aligned to either political parties that provide comfort, support and finances to enhance their presence in the various communities to get votes. When it's time for voting in an election, whether it is local or general, these gangs, political control is another area that makes our scenario unique. These gangs can destroy a candidate's ability to be elected to represent the community. Do you remember when former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller retired from representation politics? Who did she choose to succeed her? Angela Brownberg. Who is not from the constituency? and knows the people wants and needs. The dance make sure that the wishes of Mrs. Simpson Miller is carried out by the dance on the ground as the councillor who wanted to replace her from the constituency was not Miss Simpson Miller's choice and it was nothing but arbitrary to her and her supporters. These powers make them different from other environments. It is similar but different. These men's 
are pedophiles too. Their sexual abuse of minor, minors, usually females, is a core tenets of Dan rule. To some ignorant people, it is may not be force, but the affinity with men who are killers, the family and child's ability to resist our sure unwillingness can lead to attacks against the family members or the females themselves, resulting in death, as what happened in Arnett Gardens, Kinson 12. Mikal Moulton of 10th Street, Zimbabwe, that's in Arnett Gyan, where I'm from, in the community also known as Jungle, was shot through her bedroom window along with her 12-year-old sister. They were taken to the hospital where Mikal was pronounced dead and her sister is reportedly in stable condition. Others are questioning themselves that it is hopeless because Jamaica is a criminal paradise. Some people, not the woke of this, are asking, how can we move away from this culture of brutality by these men in these depressed communities? How can we destroy these dance and their kerosene oils, supporters, enablers, and financiers? At this moment in time, the only answer is the anti-gang legislation. Yes, a muscle, liney, police, Christian, penko, as dance, without again, is like a football coach who has no team to compete in the National Premier League. So you take away that from them. The trait of a gang leader, of a gang, or even a member is a crime. The requisite and points to prove the offence as gang leaders and members are easy in the legislation that need to find you and, and make it harder for these parasites to get away when they are arrested and charged and then indicted for being a member of a criminal organisation. The anti-gang legislation can have better teeth in the legislation that could end Togre. But you know, men like The Chinaman from Uptown. Yes, the one who hate police. Yes, man, how come you do not know him? Everybody in Jamaica know this man. He, this man is the godfather for Andrew Pang. Delroy Chuck. Yeah, man, Delroy Chuck. He's the one, you know, all of the light sentence that you're seeing, you know. Delroy Chuck and the PMP is the one that came up with that, you know. So they have to push him aside now. That's why we have the 15 year. Delroy Chuck is, is the one now why um, we are having a three year for murder and all those things. We need to cap that. Delroy Chuck. So they need to kick him out of the GLP LGBTQ plus party. Yeah, man. We, you know, Delroy Chuck and another um, one that from number and over one for negotiate with criminal. What an idiot. So they need to get rid of those two people out of the PMP, out of the GLP LGBTQ plus party and give them people that serious. We are very optimistic about the future of seeing the Darwinism, natural selection and the evolution of our country and its crime taking place as we speak. And it is because of the new gun act and the anti-gang legislation. The police are the ones who are required not to use the same as a strategy to make the best use of the newly adopted legislation that will result in shorter tenures and reign for gang leaders with longer sentence in our cages as a deterrence to these dunces. The Jamaica Constable Force is a demotivated constable force now. Although the tool to fix this problem is there, and who is willing to lead, lead from the front in this hostile anti-police climate? In the police force, honest police officers are sidelined and not promoted, and that is where the criminals in the police force fill the void. If I were still there, I would be one of the wasters because I would not be going out of my way to fight crime as I used to when I was younger. One party wants to do something about the crime problem in Jamaica and the other does not want to do anything because they believe that if they acted in a bipartisan manner and help reduce this crime, their chances of becoming the next government would be slim to none. And that is the reality. We now need to be a society acting as one to destroy gangs instead of fighting among ourselves with attacks against law enforcement by criminal rights groups who wish to appear still relevant and caring about killers, rapable, robbers, extortionists and the likes. Now, we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel have outlined in it to you, my loyal subscribers and viewers, the traits of being a done 
of these communities. What do you think about them as enforcers in their respective communities? Are these people deserving of living and breathing the same oxygen and air as law-abiding citizens? Or do we unite against these parasites once, once and for all that our people can live in peace without worrying about their safety, well-being and security? Thanks for watching the Jamaica Young Police Channel. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica Young Police Channel. Out. One love and all the best to you and your family. Peace.